Tidal Explodes and Reward. Janice along with you on BBC Radio Wales until 10 o'clock. Will you please welcome uh, the fabulous Louise Wayne? How are you? I'm really good. How are you? Yeah, very well. Thank you. Good to hear from you again. <laughs> um, so, um, obviously busy, but I must ask you, first of all, where did you get that Super Her t-shirt from? Oh, it's from Zazu Clothing, who are amazing. They do these amazing t-shirts. You all have to go and buy one immediately. Fantastic. I'll <laughs> Google that as soon as I get home tonight. <laughs> and are you still writing at all? Novels? And yeah, books? I'm yeah. still writing. I've got lots of other writing projects on the go, but I've just been so busy with this the last mm. almost sort of two years coming up yeah. to now, which was not expected at all. No, no. Well, it came belt out of the blue, and I was so excited. Yeah. But I always loved reading your stuff you i mean great thank writer, you. aren't you thank you is it something that you enjoy doing i love it i mm. just i think i like all those sort of creative processes so i quite like sort of being just you know on my own doing something beavering away at something that feels important to me you know i love that and how's your poker face these days oh i don't know it was never that good janice really <laughs> to be honest <laughs> Not it what was, I heard. You'd be better than me. <laughs> it was always a bit roughish, you know. And I didn't really sort of go for it. You have to really sort of be quite bold and sort of, you know, proper bluffer. Mm. And I think I always gave it away. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> well, look, we'll play a tune and then we'll talk some more in a moment. This is from uh, the album The Modern Age. And this is The Sun Also Rises. Sleeper. <laughs> And the sun also rises, and that's from the album uh, The Modern Age. My guest is Louise Weiner, and whilst that track was playing, I was looking at that website. <laughs> <laughs> you got your order in, right? <laughs> Yours has run out. <laughs> um, we, we were talking about writing and playing poker, but the writing yeah. uh, thing, it must have been um, actually really good for you at a time when the kids came along. Yeah, I mean, it was it was sort of perfect, really, because you can just sort of fit in, you know, being a parent and sort of writing, and you can just do it on the fly when you've got the time, mm. you know. Um, you know, it's difficult. It's it's actually even sort of difficult now. So going back on on touring, we only do sort of weekends. Yeah, that's about as much as we can manage with the kids. <laughs> is we go off for three days with the grandparents, and then we're back again. Yeah, but uh, you know, it's it's hard to fit stuff in. So um, writing was really was a really great thing to do for me. Yeah, I can imagine. But it's a solitary thing, isn't it? It's really solitary. I sort of missed doing things as a collaboration. So of what's been really nice has been doing things as a group again mm. and you know doing that I, I, I kind of wanted to get away from that <laughs> after yeah. sort of 90s sleeper I was like I want to get as far away from doing everything as a group decision mm. that I can but I've actually enjoyed sort of coming back and sort of doing that again after all that time yeah. and of course it was such a lot of excitement uh, when you came back yeah we were not expecting that Janice can I just say I was just like you don't you don't expect you don't know what's out there I think when you sort of walk away from it for so long and so completely you can't really sort of imagine how it might work you know so it was a big surprise to us and it was um it's been completely joyous i have to say well the thing was you were so successful everybody loved uh sleeper you were the queen of brit pop three top <laughs> 10 albums eight top 40 singles yeah. all in a short space of time yeah it was very it's very condensed it was very intense mm. that whole period of our lives and you just got so sort of caught, caught up in it and and then sort of stepping away from it was very strange and then sort of re-entering it at this stage of our lives has also been kind of quite surreal i think but it was great having you round um at that time in the Britpop time um i hate that phrase but anyway um, yeah but uh you were so opinionated and it was brilliant to have somebody like that <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, it's, I, I did have an opinion, you know, it's like, I think there was a thing about sort of women that were opinionated was sort of kind of marked up much more than men yes. that were, do you know yeah. what I mean? It's like, oh, well, she's a bit feisty, isn't she, that, yes. that one? Bit of a maverick. That's bit of a maverick, done. exactly, <laughs> which I don't, think, I don't think guys get as much. Um, and also, I think, I think it was probably easier to have an opinion and be opinionated in those days. I think people are a bit too scared to do that now because you just get sort of crushed, don't you, on social media social and everyone, media, yeah. everyone is so careful and you know watching what they say a lot of the time i think that makes it quite difficult actually yes and it's a shame it is a shame it is a shame because you get this sort of closing down and this sort of lack of discussion because everyone's a bit fearful and people are so quick to judge mm. everybody you know so it's quite harsh out there i'm imagining um 
so sort of pre-social media, um, you being vociferous about certain things, which was great, yeah. as I say, um, but also it attracted attention, didn't it? It did, and I sort of I wasn't expecting that particularly, but I realised very quickly that's what it did. And you know, I was kind of we were all very competitive at that stage of our lives. I was like, <laughs> well, yeah, I'll just I used to go in there with sort of quotes that I'd pull out and go, right, I'll say that, that'll get a brilliant, that'll get me a whole <laughs> half a page probably. <laughs> <laughs> so were you always really good at school at English? I was. I was kind of, mm. sort of quite nerdy about that kind of stuff. I loved. I just. I've always loved words and all that kind of stuff it really sort of was a kind of an escape for me so I did you know did sort of poetry like really sort of angsty poetry in my teens and that sort of went from there really so do you think that's why I mean you, a you're good with words and dealing with journalists but also that journalists liked you or like you still I think that they liked having someone that would give them something to write about and something to say so it wasn't just kind of oh I, I was really into this song when I was young and mm. I grew up on this fall b-side and blah 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 you know it's kind of I was very keen to sort of you know to talk about all sorts of things but I do think that was kind of more the style then I think everyone would just go to the pub and get drunk and sort of spout spout <laughs> <laughs> you know where were, the, where were the places to hang out then then we were just anywhere in Camden really yes, I, think, so. have been. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think we also lived there and just, it was our sort of you know, stomping ground mm-hmm. back in the day yeah and it's quite different now isn't it I think it is, although I, I, did, I went back sort of not, not long ago, I hadn't changed that much. <laughs> it was like, there was still the incense and the Doc Martens and, oh, the, yes. you know, all, yes. the, all the usual stuff going on. All the food stores have changed. All the food stuff. I think I might have the same hot dog that I ate in 1995, still sort of, still <laughs> hanging around. <laughs> well, I used to love going on a Sunday <gasps> and having the hummus and falafels in pita bread. Yes. Oh. Definitely. Quick, let's get to Camden. <laughs> it was so delicious. But what I did notice, that then you could root around and find really interesting bric-a-brac, you know, um, old bits and pieces, whereas now it seems to be an awful lot of the same thing. Yeah, and it's more expensive, I'm imagining. Oh, yes, I'm yes, imagining. yes. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but at Camden, um, for those people who don't know, I mean, it really was uh, the sort of hangout place for bands and for journalists, wasn't it? Yeah, so sort of pubs like the Good Mixer and all of those places that mm. just became, I think, sort of tourists used to come, like Japanese tourists would come and sort of hang out outside and take pictures, you know, of the Good <laughs> Mixer, in case Damon was hanging out or something, you know. <laughs> Um, and Damon forgave you for stealing the cheese board? Uh, I, well, who, who knows? Probably not. He probably still seethes about it inwardly. I, I hope so. <laughs> um, what were the highlights of that period for you then? Oh, I don't know. There were so many. I mean, it was like uh, we, we sort of did so many things that I sort of dreamt of doing when I was a kid. You know, sort of going on tour, going to uh, touring around America, playing in Japan. We supported REM, you know. Is that just, when Michael sang Happy Birthday to he you? He did. He did on my on my. 30th birthday I wow. think yeah so, which was amazing and so all of those things that you kind of grow up thinking oh we're going to be on top of the pops you know mm. all of those things were just yeah they were great so everything lived up to the expectation it sort of it sort of did um <laughs> but you, I think what was really strange about it was how quickly you get used to it so I think when I was growing up the things I thought would be most amazing would be like being on the front cover of a magazine or being on tv mm. and they aren't the things that are great the things that are great are really sort of writing a song that someone sings along to at a gig mm. so you walk out on stage and someone sings your words back at you or you're in the studio creating a song and and it, it starts as a small thing and it becomes this beautiful thing that you created you know together those are the great things that you sort of look back and think that's when it really feels a bit magical i think i've always thought that whenever i see an audience sing an artist or a band song i think that must be such a thrill for the artist it is. It's completely thrilling. It's, it's probably more so now than it was back then because I think you kind of, I don't know, I think as I'm older now, I sort of appreciate it much more and you sort of live in the moment of it and you really enjoy yeah. it while it's happening. I'm not sort of really worried about what everyone's thinking or trying to impress people. I'm not sort of self-conscious in the way that I was in my 20s. So I'm just sort of standing there and singing this song and I'm just lost in it. And um, I'm really loving it, I have to say. Isn't it crazy, though, when anybody looks back? I mean, I'm older than you, and <laughs> somebody younger than you will be d- looking back now at younger pictures and stuff. But you kind of look at it and think, why was I not that confident sometimes? I know. <laughs> why? Oh, my God. It's, <laughs> it's so annoying, isn't it? It it's is. Like, <laughs> you, could, you could just grab it and sort of switch, switch it around somehow and just sort of have it then. But, yeah. but it's, it's lovely to have that now, I think. I think you just have to sort of relish it, mm. really. And what did you make of the whole Britpop thing, then? Do you know, I mean, I didn't really sort of care about it one no. way or the other. I mean, just everyone 
everyone likes to put people in a sort of category, mm. don't they, and say this is what it is. I think it was, what I remember about it is it was just this kind of big sunny summer and there was this big sort of sense of optimism and guitar yeah. bands were everywhere and it just, it was more like it was a sense of something, you know, but I've always been about, did you like the tunes? Did you want to sing along? Yes. Did they make you feel something? I don't really ever care what something's called, you know, I just well, don't mind. I had this discussion with Lana and Steve Lamatt last week and yeah. I, well, I hate all of these categories. Yeah. And he's like, no, 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 you have to have, you know, this is what happens. Yeah. Categories emerge. And I went, well, I don't like it. It's just, yeah. is it good or bad? But that's a bloke thing, isn't it? Categories, she says carefully. <laughs> isn't it? We're going cut- to put everything in alphabetical order and this is what it is. And I'm just like, do you want to sing the tune? Do you not want to sing the tune? That kind of, that's pretty much it for me. See, this is the lady who coined the phrase sleeper blokes. <laughs> Didn't you? I didn't. Someone else did oh, that. Oh, really? You yeah, and no, it wasn't ours. Well, it was great. <laughs> yeah. Take credit. Well, we sold some T-shirts off the back of that, so <laughs> that's great. These are the people, you know, quite often, this is the example people use. They can always name Chris Martin, but they can never re- <laughs> name the rest of yeah, Coldplay. It's true, but it's kind of, you know, uh, the lead singer always gets the spot, mm. right? I mean, but we used to do interviews back in the day and they would say to us, well, yeah, you can have a front cover of The Enemy, but you can only have it if it's just you. Uh, you know, so yeah. things like that. So we kind of, there was lots of weird sort of bribery that went on around all of that stuff that probably people don't think happened. <laughs> Well, it's a cracking album. Thank you so how, much. How excited were you when you were making it? I was incredibly excited. You know, I just I couldn't believe that we'd actually got to the stage of doing it, and that we had sort of Stephen Street producing it. And <gasps> Love Beth, Stephen Street. Yeah, he's amazing. And we just I think that was the most sort of nerve wracking thing. You know, where we sort of sent him the demos of the songs. And we thought, well, if he likes them, I think we're probably onto something, and this will actually be an album. You know, because mm. you know you don't know, you're not sure, and, that, and it just worked out. Um, I think it worked out better than we we expected in, in, in lots of ways. And it must be quite nerve wracking when you some you know you've got this idea Stephen Street we'd like Stephen Street he's great it must be quite nerve-wracking sending stuff off in fear that somebody comes back and goes no sorry it is after so long as well so we kind of we were just waiting for the call you know what do you think what do you think and we just and he really loved what we'd done and we got in the studio and it you know in the way that sometimes old relationships just click yes. and work in a really nice way you just like if you go and catch up with old friends yes. that you haven't seen for a long time you're right back in that sort of lovely vibe that you had and, that, and that's kind of what happened. So it that was, again, another lovely thing to come another, out of yeah, it. Yeah, that's brilliant. And, of course, a, a touring. Yeah. What was that like, sort of going out? When, when, when was the first one you did? It was, so it was 2017 in the right. summer. And we were just going to do, and that was literally all we had in mind to do. We were just going to see if we could get back on stage, perform together and do four gigs. Would it work? Mm. And it was sort of amazing and we and it was kind of nerve-wracking as well i had sort of stage fright probably at one of those gigs for the first Did time you? first time in my life ever i've never experienced it oh. it went away like about now before we went on so it was fine but i just like i think i just thought can i still do this you know it felt very odd to be stepping back into it and thankfully since then it's been just i've, I've actually loved it i've been like let me on <laughs> <laughs> and of course um <gasps> dates continue don't they yes we've got, we've got next weekend and um, we're in sort of derby and cardiff and hebden bridge and then we're in Bristol and London the following weekend. That's right. Fourth is Derby. That's sold out. Yeah, I think Cardiff is sold out. Yeah, and have done. Hebden so Bridge is sold out. <laughs> Bristol uh, Oto Academy. That's the twelfth, and um, Kentish Town Forum on the thirteenth. Yes. Is that like going home? Yeah, a little bit, you know, and obviously we'll have lots of mates there and, you know, family, all that kind of stuff, which is, which will be really lovely. That used to be one of my favourite venues. I love it, actually. I Do really they still love it. sell sweets? Yes, our sweets. Oh my God! If, <laughs> <laughs> I really hope they do. What, was, what, what sweets did she get? They used to sell um, something like uh, just Smarties and Skittles and oh. and those um, you know crisps, not, but they're not crisps. They're like fish um, sticks. Yeah, so that's um, what you want. That's what you want in a gig. I yeah. Think. Well, that's what I was liked about the Heavenly Social. You could get a fish finger sandwich. Oh, see? That's perfect, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> it is absolutely perfect. And also what I liked about Kentish uh, Town Forum, they had the balcony. Yeah, the balcony's great, isn't it? Yeah. I love that. I like a balcony. I like to be able to sit like down and just look down upon suede or whatever. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, right, tell us about this next track, Paradise Waiting. Um, you know, it's kind of, it's a sort of a female empowerment song writ large in all of its forms, I think is what it is. Good, here yeah. we go.
by the cracking trap from Sleeper. Uh, that is Paradise Waiting. Uh, waiting. Uh, my guest is Louise uh, Wayne. Uh, we were talking then about female empowerment. What do you think about some of the artists who are around these days? Hello. Hello. <laughs> oh, there you are. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Where's she you gone? Me? <laughs> she... <laughs> we, had, we had some like, ghosts in the machine earlier and we were trying to sort of sort out the sound and it was all kind of distorted <laughs> and weird. So, but yeah, we, I'm here. back. I'm Did back, you hear I'm that here. question? Yeah, so I mean, there's just, there's so many, there's so many women and just so many great artists so just you know since we were doing it my god yeah i mean it has come on in leaps and bounds in some ways mm. um because you know it, it it was always a bit well it was always very difficult actually for the women in the music industry whether it be you know playing music performing music writing music or whatever yeah. um the the, the 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 boys were always a wee bit ahead they were, and I think so. The women were sort of just kind of you were so you. It was so sort of over analysed when you did it as well. It was like under, you were under a microscope. So, the question I was always asked was like, "What's it like being a woman in a band?" You know, oh. it was like kind of you know, endlessly. It was like I just I just want to play my music. Mm. You know, I don't want to have to sort of constantly sort of self reference it. You know, and think about my position in the world in terms. I don't think a guy in a band has ever been asked that question. No. What's it like no. being a boy in a band? What can you imagine? ever being asked that question it would just be strange and I think uh you know and the 90s were a sort of strange time for that I think women felt that they had to sort of behave like blokes to kind of be taken seriously so we all kind of had our big boots on and our, our little t-shirts and that's kind of what we did and we just mm. we could sort of we can sort of party with uh, like the best of them you know and I don't know it was there were odd times it was there was a lot of a lot of stuff around that there are people from that time I would quite happily still punch let me put it that way <laughs> anybody you'd like to name uh, <laughs> for, for legal reasons it can't be um, <laughs> that was another phrase that came out at the time which really annoyed me it was as though women had never had a drink before ladder the ladder oh thing. for goodness yeah, sake I mean, it was I mean you look back at now you sort of see how sort of patronizing it was yeah it's extraordinary so you know you couldn't oh oh we had, had a little bit of a drink you know, <laughs> ooh, we've written a song with some sexy words in it oh goodness me mm. you know it's very sort of like nudge nudge wink wink it was it was incredible because I think I had thought that uh, the music industry and people that wrote about music I thought they would be incredibly sort of liberal and forward thinking I suppose I found it much more conservative mm. than than I was expecting what do you think about um I'm trying to people who sort of um <sighs> overtly sort of it's the sexualization so like little mix in their great yeah. big knickers in their great big knickers it's interesting little mix stuff isn't because i want i want girls and women to go on stage and perform in whatever sort mm. of way they want to it's it's absolutely fine and i you know i grew up with madonna you know it's kind of and yeah. she was she was overtly sexual and it felt like she was very much in control of that i suppose what i feel is it's quite a narrow version of is what you're getting yeah. so it's kind of the kind of the version of sexiness it doesn't feel it feels a bit sort of plastic and sort of confined you know mm. um yeah and it was interesting cause i think it was this whole thing with sort of jack whitehall afterwards because he sort of made a joke about their performance on the brits hadn't he and said oh all this sort of the men the, the, the dads at home are having to get their cushions yes do it i was i mean i was about to say it was below the belt <laughs> very much below the belt but it's interesting because i mean they, it was an overtly sexual performance so if you're going to do a sexual performance and which is brilliant and fine you've got to sort of claim it you can't mm. sort of do a sexual performance and then say oh but it wasn't sexual really and it was and that's mm. either that's good or you know you can't i don't you need to apologize for it at all i suppose i think sometimes i see pictures and i might not have seen the video so i could be talking out of turn here but i see what looks like um you know a screen grab or something from a video and you think why are you performing in your knickers not and this isn't just little mix but you know yeah. people are like really do i need to see your bottom i know <laughs> there was like you know <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't always have to be knickers. If it can be knickers, if you fancy knickers, we can, you know, whatever. It's like yeah. do whatever you like. But I, what I worry about is just that it's kind of it's just a narrow version of it that you kind of that yeah. it's almost like there's a pressure to be a certain way. You know, I want people to be overtly sexual if that's what they want to be. Mm. But it just feels like it's it's just feels like just one way through it. You know? Yeah. No, totally agree. Yeah. Totally agree. Um, have you embarrassed your children yet? Because oh God, can't that say. age. <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's my job, Janice. Now to. Just to embarrass them we found a quite a cool way to embarrass them i suppose so they come to they've come to lots of festivals with us and you know they're watching 
you know, other pop stars behind us. There's like sort of Rag and Bone Man and Paloma Faith and all these people that they already think are cool. Mm. And then we go on and they think, oh my God, my mum's playing on the same stage. That's quite cool, but also so embarrassing because <laughs> she's doing that little sort of jumpy, hoppy move that she makes and I just want to die of, <laughs> die of shame. So yeah, we shame them and slightly impress them, I suppose, on That's some level. That's your job. That's yeah. your job. But the thing is, they're going to look back and think, how cool. I hope so. Like one day they yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah, one they day they think it's they cool. They will, definitely. <laughs> um, are hits important to you? Um, I, you know, I just, I don't really feel any of the, the pressure of it as uh, in the way that it was because it's not, it's like, it's not everything to us. It's not like this is our, it isn't our career really. It's like something we've stepped back into mm. and then we're doing it for, principally for the love of it, you know, because we wanted to make another record that we were proud of and that's almost the whole thing. So could we go on stage and do shows that we thought were great? Mm. Could we make an album that we loved? So the perception is more about, you know, the people that loved us back in the day and they've been saying lovely things about this album and the response has been incredible and I think that's more than we expected if we're honest because the reviews have been great haven't they yeah the direction's been amazing to it so I just you know it's it's all gravy as they say <laughs> and what about the audiences because are there new sleeper fans there are new so lots, lots of people are bringing their kids with them which mm. is like That's really great. lovely and you do see just some sort of young people that obviously have kind of got into that sort of retro thing that they like 90s music so they're coming to sort of check it out retrospectively and really enjoying it which is lovely um but the crowds have just generally been really really immense i have to say no yeah. it's great it's great now there's one another um, a little known fact that george michael was your backing singer oh my goodness yes <laughs> We, I did a, a, a sort of semi sort of um, solo album which never sort of saw the light of day and we did some of it at George Michael's studio and there was one song that I was recording that he really liked and he sort of, he sort of semi produced it and he got into it and he said, do you mind if I sing some backing vocals at the end of the track? And I was like, what do you mean do I mind? <laughs> you know, and he just went and did them and it was like, you know, it's, it's this lovely sort of, it's not like you, you, I couldn't put it out and it'd be like, oh, we can well, we can hear his George Michael, it's not like that, but he's on it. And I just remember sort of listening to him doing, and he was like sort of speaking to me, going, is that all right? Am I doing it all right? Is oh. it all right? I was like, what do you mean? Are you doing it all right? You're George Michael. It just sounds immense, you know? So. And the world's yeah. loveliest man. Oh, just such a lovely man. And just, mm. just really funny and generous and really sort of candid. You know, he just came yeah. in and just told lovely, funny stories mm. every day. And, yeah, an absolute sweetheart, I have to say. He was gorgeous. I always yeah. remember his dad <laughs> coming up to me once. I was something to do with the Ivan Novellas. His dad coming up and saying, you say anything horrible about my son, I kill you. <laughs> I guess he didn't mean it. <laughs> I'm going to his birthday party. Oh, how it was brilliant. incredible. I bet. It was, and it was all secret. It was amazing. I don't know how I got an invite, but it was fantastic. Oh. It really was. Um, the, the last, listen, I have listened to the whole of the album several times. Do oh, not think you. I've just played the third, so first much. three tracks of the album. <laughs> it would appear that way. Because uh, I'm going to play Look At You Now. And I'm curious to know who this is about. Well, it's, uh, it's really about... Uh, it, politics and it becoming sort of extreme at both sides and sort of about sort of rationality and debate disappearing and everybody just steaming in and criticising and leaping on each other and a bit about what we were talking about right at the beginning that you know, we're all too scared to say anything on Twitter because everyone's going to just yeah. you know, destroy us for it and you know I feel like left, right, whoever you turn to we have no more heroes anymore everyone, everyone is screwing it up and we, mm. I think a lot of us feel politically homeless and I do right now. I think it's a brilliant phrase, politically homeless. Yeah, that's, that's where I a lot of us are at, I think. Yeah, definitely. Um, a, a joy as ever. Thank you so Thank much, Louise. Thank you so much. You take care of yourself. The album is The Modern Age, and I have been talking to Louise Wayner, and this is Sleeper. Look at you now. Take care. Thank you. All right, that's love. Bye. Thank you. Lord, forgive me for what I've done. Sleeper from the album The Modern Age, and that is Look At You Now, Louise. Isn't she lovely? She really, really is. Always a joy uh, to chat with her. Right, I didn't see it last night, but Line of Duty returned. 7.8 million viewers. So that's going to go up, isn't it, once people start watching it um, on iPlayer. Right, The Cure in between days. (laughs) 